It's been an incredible year. Literally, my, my dreams came true and more. Things I never could have even imagined were within the realm of possibility. I feel like it's just the beginning. The following program. Modern style. We just came out with the collected Velour the Drag magazine, which celebrates three years of me and my partner Johnny making a zine about amazing drag basically out of our living room, starting with it being stapled, and now it is a hardcover gorgeous art book um, that's twice the original size. And I'm excited for that to grow and become a, yet another showcase for the amazing drag talent that exists out there in the world. Nightgowns is growing, and I hope we can travel even further than London and Los Angeles to really get in touch with the amazing queer people all over the world. I, I don't know, there's so many, there's so many options and I, my goal is just to stay true to the very first like spirit that got me interested in drag, which is this idea that being queer can mean uniting a whole community together. And through that, um, through that conversation that you get when you bring people together, bringing everyone um, towards a place of change and progress. And I think drag, drag has always inspired people to come together, to be joyous, and to fight for what matters. And if we can do it through beauty and positivity and lip syncing our favorite pop songs, then let's do it. <laughs> I think a lot of people who only know a very little bit about drag believe that drag is all about um, looking like a woman. But that has, that's a sort of questionable notion because the possibilities for what a woman or what a man looks like are actually limitless and should be. And what queer culture brings to the whole world of gender is, is that kind of blurriness. And so I think drag right now being more mainstream, especially reaching more young people, we can offer this powerful message of, you don't need to look any specific way. You don't need to dress according to the gender you're assigned in any specific way, and you definitely don't need to dress according to the gender that you choose in any sort of way. For me, dressing in a, in a femme or dressing in a masculine way, it's all part of a huge queer spectrum where hopefully I'm just dressing in a way that I find beautiful, that I can be proud of when I step out onto the streets. And so that's been my goal. And I love that people love it with me because I put so much passion and just personal flair into everything I put on. When I go back and look at pictures of myself as a little kid, I see that push to transgress any kind of gender limitations right from the beginning. I remember on, for Pride, New York City Pride, I got to wear this fantastic purple outfit to close out my set at, on Pride Island and purple has always been my favorite color. Now I, now I like red and fuchsia because I like to be a little bit more bright and eye-catching, but purple when I was a little kid was a color that boys weren't really allowed to wear. That's what all the kids at school told me. And so I just filled my wardrobe with as much purple as I could possibly find. Because who cares? Life's too short to dress by other people's rules. This year we've seen just a shift overall in how political, the discussions about drag race are getting. And I think that's fantastic. There's, there was such a, a growth of discussion of racism within queer spaces because of drag race this season. There's been discussions about the place of trans and non-binary entertainers within our world. And that's not because of me, it's not because of any other one queen. It's because the queer community as a whole is learning and testing all these conflicts and all these limits. And we are hopefully gonna turn back and look at our own history, which has kind of all the answers and all those conflicts going back a long time. The classic way that queer people have been political is by having riots and protests and being over the top and loud and really forcing public taste to confront queer lives and queer experiences. That is powerful because that shifts the discussions that people have to have because they can't ignore us shouting about um, the real struggles that our community faces every day from homelessness to addiction to the murder of trans and especially queer people of color every day in our community. And 
that is one step, but I think there's also room for us to really become represented in new ways, for our voices to not just be on the street, but actually at the table. I want to see some queer politicians. I want to see some drag queens and drag kings running for office and really shifting the way that policy is made as well. And the good thing is drag, becoming, drag is becoming so prevalent that you know, one of these politicians may just try to put on a wig and, and some heels. And if they did walk a day in these shoes, it would probably change the way they thought about some important issues. I think Bianca Del Rio should be in politics. I think you have to absolutely not tolerate any bullshit whatsoever to make it in a system full of so much red tape. And I feel like she could probably cut through it. I'd, I'd love to see her try. <laughs> I'd love to, <laughs> we'll see. I have a lot of opinions um, and I really wanna see some changes made, especially for, for queer people. This is not an official statement of any kind. I'm just freestyling here, <laughs> but who knows?